You know, believe it or not, I have a huge nostalgic soft spot for the early 2000s. So it should come to you as no surprise when I tell you that a show that many would consider a time capsule of that era to be my second favorite TV show of all time. Now I'm going to stop pretending that you didn't read the title. Yes, no, maybe. I don't know. Can you repeat the question? You're not the boss of me now. What characteristics come to mind when you think of a family show? What are the character archetypes? What are the relationships with one another? Does it have a laugh track? So it's settled. The fate of Doctor Who's TARDIS will be decided by a Game of Thrones inspired death match on the battlefield of Thundercats versus Transformers. You! Where was the joke? He just fucking named a bunch of sh How is this comedy? <laughs> Why are you laughing? I can't read your mind or hear you no matter how loud you are, but I'm going to assume you thought of shows like Full House or maybe Modern Family, maybe even The Simpsons. Shows that the entire family could put on and have a good old time. But you read the title, so let me overstep my boundaries to share with you some personal trauma. And why I think Malcolm in the Middle is the quintessential family show. No, I'm sure you're a terrific parent. At the core, what I believe makes for a good family show is, of course, the family. Dewey, get out of there. That's not your family. Their relationships with one another should be unique, and as the show progresses, we see how that changes. Another important thing to know is when not to put in a joke as a cheap substitute for character development. Why don't I drive your boys to school today? That's okay, Dad. I don't mind walking. No, 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 no. I really want to. A chance to spend a few extra minutes with my sons and join their company? Honestly, son, it'll be the highlight of my day. Great. Now I can't even be mad at him. It's important to have moments where characters interact with each other for compelling reasons, rather than because you needed to meet a quota for how many laugh tracks you needed in each episode. Keep in mind, I'm not saying that this is the only way to make a family show work. I'm saying this is the basis to recognize and build on, or subvert all that. Uh, sir? Yes? Thank you for making eye contact with me. Malcolm in the Middle started off as funny stories series creator Linwood Boomer would tell to other writers on shows he's worked on. This is the world. 196 million square miles. If I covered 100 square miles an hour, every hour for the rest of my life, I'd still only see half of it. My name is Malcolm. You want to know what the best thing about childhood is? At some point it stops. In a DVD commentary for the pilot episode, Linwood says this opening joke let him start writing the show. This is really important to point out because this opening dialogue is the first thing viewers see when getting introduced to the show, and it says everything you need to know. Let's look at family relationships, and I don't mean the Alabama kind. Spread your legs! No! I said spread your legs! No! It's time for the talk, Hal. Lois and Hal have amazing chemistry, and their dynamic role reversal really adds something unique to the family show formula. I realized that the Lois character was the strength, the heart, the bombastic, in control, tough as nails, you know, sort of a role reversal, I thought. She was like, she's definitely the head of the household. So I thought, well, what would be a good compliment is to not compete with her but to support maybe what she needs so i thought well maybe hal is more introspective maybe he's quieter calmer more sensitive can you buy me a herbie no they're too expensive maybe ask me again in four seconds can you buy me a herbie please didn't you just hear me i said no ask louder Dewey is probably the most unique character, as his dialogue and point of view shots are done with the most sincerity. And I appreciate all that attention to detail, as Dewey could have easily been some forgettable kid. How much does my head weigh? Zero. Zero. Malcolm and Reese are complete opposites. He has an IQ of 165. Who? Malcolm. Honestly, Hal, I don't know what's wrong with Reese. Oh, he's just a little slow. Out of all of them, hands down, the best relationship is between Lois and her oldest son, Francis, who was sent to military school because 
Dad, I know what you're gonna say, and believe me, I totally agree with you. There is no excuse. I'm hoping against hope, and I don't deserve. If you could just find it in your heart to forgive me, I know I could earn your trust back. Because we almost never see these two together in the same room, they were tasked with the hardest relationship to convince the audience of. They needed to demonstrate that these two have an extensive history prior to what we, the audience, have seen. What? You're smoking. I can hear you smoking. You're smoking, aren't you? Mom, I'm not smoking. Jeez. After seeing the anguish your father and I went through to quit, did any of that register with you? In the eyes of producers, this show looked like a risk. Sure, the pilot script was funny and original, but sometimes these projects can easily be derailed and ultimately shelved for multiple reasons. It was an uphill battle from the start, and a definite fork in the road revolved around the character. You see, test audiences, they didn't agree with their parenting skills. Great game! Oh, 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 you're gonna give me a technical? You're gonna give me a technical? You can't give me a technical! It's an eight inch scratch on the car, Francis! You know how much that's gonna cost to fix? If you think you are ever, ever borrowing my car again, you are sadly mistaken! And I saw that tattoo, Jimmy! I'm telling your mother! They sit 12 people in a room and have them watch the show with little dials and uh, the more they like it at a given moment, the more they turn the dial up, and the more they dislike it at a given moment, they turn the dial down. So these morally superior individuals essentially get to play gatekeeper in what does or does not go on TV. What kind of system is that where we just let a small group of people choose the outcome for all of us? It doesn't make any sense, and I hope this practice is abolished everywhere. If these people had their way, we would have had Lois at the end of every episode sit on the edge of a bed and tell her children how much she loves them and regurgitate some contrived PSA. Just remember, any kid who makes fun of you is a creepy little loser who'll end up working in a car wash. It shouldn't make me feel better, but it does. The show focuses on a lower middle class family, and Lois's character was all about tough love. Not once was she ever mean just because. She almost always had a reason. You didn't have to agree with it, but at least you understood why. Because they wrote her to be a character with depth. There's an episode where Lois loses her job for returning an expensive bottle of liquor that Dewey stole. She takes it as an opportunity to teach Dewey a lesson in honesty and owning up to your mistakes. But instead of accepting the misunderstanding, her boss fires her. Which means that money gets tight and we see the entire family suffer from it. It gets to the point where Hal ends up at the hospital for eating expired food, and the bill becomes too overwhelming. Three, four, okay, you boys take care of your dad. I'm gonna go see Mr. Pinter and beg for my job back. What? Mom, wait. You don't have to do that. Yes, I do. I don't want to. Shouldn't have to, but guess what? I do. But I want you boys to understand something. I am not going back on anything I said before. You know, sometimes bad things happen, and you don't understand why, and you just have to trust that there's a good reason for it. Sure, it's... The show didn't always have the most optimistic plot lines, but it also didn't sugarcoat anything to protect our sensible senses. And more importantly, when things got tough, one thing was always sure, and that was this family would always stick together. George. Dude! Yes! Mom! Big Mouth. Malcolm. <laughs> Big Brothers. Chris. I will knock you into last night. Big Trouble. Big families, big laughs. Funny every time. Weeknights at 8 on Nick at Night. So, you're hanging out with this group of kids, and somebody mentions that he has a gun. A gun? What does he need a gun for? And maybe you want to fit in so you don't say a word. Wrong. You may have the power to stop violence before it starts. And if you're scared, they might find out it was you. Tell your folks and let them take action. By keeping quiet, you might think you're protecting yourself. But by speaking up, you might save a life. You're watching this on a wide aspect ratio, which means basically 16 times this way, 9 times this way. All right, that's approximately something like that. Normal television right now is 4-3. Four, 4 times this way, 3 times this way. 
HDTV, high definition television, will all be 16.9 in the future, and a lot of people have it right now. On Malcolm, we do try to accommodate for the widescreen visible shot, uh, but sometimes we run out of time, and for most of the viewers, four, three is sufficient. The show was made at a time where television was starting to make its transition into HD, which means that if you're streaming this show now or watching it in HD, you're probably going to see things that were never meant to be seen. So let's look at a couple of them. You might also notice that this is a single camera show, which means, for the most part, scenes were shot on actual locations and not on a soundstage with a live audience. And more importantly, no laugh track. Audiences also seem to appreciate the absence of a laugh track, commonly used in sitcoms to convince people that what they're watching is funny. It's crazy to think that laugh tracks are still being used to this day. You'd think stuff like that would have been gone now and seen as relics of the past. Another thing is in America, we only got season one on DVD, which is how I'm able to get this footage. But other countries get the entire series. But France? France not only got the complete series, they released a special edition made to look like a family album. Back to the show, I have to say that I really love these cold openings. What are you looking at, monkey boy? A lot of them have a similar structure with a setup and a punchline at the end, and they read a lot like a comic from a Sunday newspaper. It's rare for a show this ambitious to get on air, when it could have easily not gone past its pilot. And it's even especially rare for a show to get its footing within the first minute. Most series might take a season or two to figure things out, but not Malcolm. But on September 2001, something happened that would change the show forever. It won two awards from the Television Academy for the bowling episode. I'll give you a strike! Here's your damn strike! <laughs> Debatably one of, if not the best in the series. The premise is simple. Malcolm and Reese get invited to a bowling night with a group of other kids. And the episode switches back and forth between what it would be like if Lois or Hal took them. We're ready. Who's gonna drive us? I'll do it. I'll do it. You to your room! March! Come on, son. Race to your room! It's a monumental moment in terms of TV writing and directing, and I can't recommend it enough. On top of being loved by both viewers and critics, the show was also a commercial success. Which may I remind you of all the rare components this show was able to capture. And then be able to turn a profit? That's unheard of. This show is the definition of lightning in a bottle, and a rare moment for television. Malcolm! Not now! We're my family. We're not the greatest family in the world, but we could get better. I mean... It's not impossible. Malcolm! What? Can I get out? No, stop asking. So basically, I think everything's gonna be okay. A bump on a nose. So what do you want me to do about it? And ask one more question. Sure. I have to know. When people get to heaven, are they... You know, perfect. Would you like to see? Sure. <laughs>